In this airbrush tutorial, I'm going to show you how I paint the mouth on a full portrait. So not only are we going to be painting the lips here, but I'm also going to show you how to fit that into a portrait, how to blend it all together. In last week's video, which was part one, we painted what you see here, the left eye, the nose, and the surrounding skin texture. And since we already have a good part of this portrait painted in, we need to paint in this mouth in a similar hue, which is the color, and a similar value, which is how dark and how light everything is. And if we paint those two things incorrectly, we'll have no problem getting the mouth to match this portrait. So the first thing I want to do here is take the flesh tone that we mixed from last week's video and add a small amount of that to a cup, maybe 20, 30 drops. And then to that color, I'm going to add some red to it. This is the color Scarlet, and I'll add about maybe 15, maybe 20 drops, somewhere around there. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking that flesh tone color and shifting the temperature of it. I'm making it warmer here by adding that red. So what we'll get here is a color that's very similar to the flesh tone that we used to paint in the portrait but just slightly more red so it's going to fit very well for a lip color it's going to have that pinkish hue to it one tip here is that i love to use these cheap plastic droppers just to take out of a small container like this and add a few drops into the airbrush because you don't need much for this now just like everything else in painting i want to try to break this down to its simplest forms so that i don't get overwhelmed and i don't start rushing from one part to another so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to focus on painting the upper lip first. I have this color that we just mixed in my airbrush and you can see that I'm just using a large shield to line up that transition point between the upper and the lower lip. When you're painting this in, make sure you pay attention to the curves that you see on this transition point because it's not concave all the way. It kind of goes up in some areas and just kind of changes. So I'll move my shield around a few different ways and just kind of get it to fit this curve that I drew in. And of course, I'm spraying this paint upwards toward that upper lip, which is going to create a gradient on that lip. Darker at the bottom and lighter as it moves up to the top. So now we have a major reference point added in for the lips, that transition between the upper and lower. What I'm going to do now is start adding in some of the texture on this upper lip. Take a look at my completed painting on the left and you'll notice that this upper lip has a lot of texture to it. And just like last week's video where we were adding in some of the skin texture above the eye, some of those small wrinkles, we're going to do the same thing here with a ripped piece of paper. But this time, instead of spraying in these lines horizontal, we're going to spray them vertically, perpendicular to that line that we painted in, that transition line between the upper and lower lip. So with the same color in the airbrush, I'm just spraying to the left of this ripped piece of paper, and that way that edge, that texture, gets transferred over. And remember that these lines are going to act as the shadows for each one of these creases. So after I have a few of these in, I'm going to switch right back over to the airbrush, same color, and start adding a glaze in. I'm going to darken up the lower part of this upper lip just to add to that gradient. Remember, it's going to be brighter on top, darker at the bottom. And notice here that I'm spraying the paint on the ripped piece of paper, letting the overspray do the work for me. The overspray just gets onto the canvas very lightly so these lines are not too dark. If I really pulled back on the airbrush trigger and directed it right over that transition point, these lines will get too dark way too quickly, and it's always easiest to start with lighter lines and slowly build them up. Because later on, when I spray some of this color over this entire lip, it's not only going to darken up those lighter areas, but it's also going to darken these as well. So I don't want to get too dark too quickly. And that's what I'll do here. I'll spray a few more of these in. Once I have those lines in, right back over to the glaze and start spraying this over the top. And this thin glaze of paint is going to fill in the gaps in between each one of these shadows. And it's going to act like the mid-tone or the half-tone for each one of these wrinkles. For the top part of the lip, that transition point where it meets the flesh tone, I'm going to use a shield again. I'm just going to line it up on the left side and then spray the paint down. Just a small amount. I don't want this to start looking like an outline around the outside of the lips. Just a transition point between the lip and the flesh tone. And then I'll use the airbrush freehand to fill in that empty space so we have an even layer of paint across this lip. Now as I move along to the right side of the lip, I'm going to do the same thing by using a shield to spray in that transition point between the top of the lip and the skin texture. Like I always say, there's not a single way or a right way to go about painting. You can do it any way you want. So for example here, let's say you just want to paint in some of these shadows for these wrinkles freehand. You could do that no problem. Just hold your airbrush really close to the surface and spray in the line. Now all airbrushes can paint very thin hairlines and very tight detail. 
but you'll notice here that even though I sprayed these lines in pretty tight, they're still not as sharp as the ones to the left, which were painted in with the ripped piece of paper. And that's just because an airbrush, no matter how close you're holding it, is atomizing paint, it's spraying it. So naturally, the edge of a line painted with an airbrush is always going to be softer than one painted in with a traditional paintbrush or done with a shield. I'll add a few more of these freehand shadows in off to the right, and then what I'll do, just like before, is take the airbrush and then glaze a thin layer of paint over the whole lip to have that even value in so we could start erasing into it. And then I'm going to lay down a piece of paper so that my right hand is resting on that rather than the paint, and I'm going to start erasing out lines to the left of each one of these shadows. You'll notice that my eraser comes to a pretty sharp point. Very easy to do. All I use for that is an electric pencil sharpener. These erasers tend to dull pretty quickly, so I'll usually sharpen it every 5 to 10 minutes of use. I'll continue along to the right, erasing out these highlights to the left of each one of these shadows. And once I have these in here, you'll notice that the lip doesn't really fit the rest of the portrait. It kind of looks like it was just pasted in there. So what I need to start doing now is blending the values and the textures together so it looks like a seamless transition of one portrait rather than lips just stuck onto another painting. And the first way I'm going to go about this is blending in that transition point between the top of the lip, what some people call the cupid's bow, right up here. You can see I'm erasing in small circular motions overlapping the skin texture and the top part of that lip. And what this does is just kind of blend those textures together. The eraser goes both over the skin texture and the lip, giving you a more seamless transition between the two. And now I'm going to speed through some of this, but what I'm doing here is just adding some texture into the skin like we did in last week's video. So this way the texture between the nose and the upper lip will match the texture that we painted in last week. And in order to get these textures to match, what I'm doing is I'm looking at the area that I painted in before. I'm looking at the cheek above and to the left and some of the texture on the nose. While I was comparing them, I noticed that this upper lip is still too light and the color looks a little bit too warm to me. It looks too red. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch over to the flesh tone mixture that we used in last week's video. And I'm going to start spraying over some of the things that we just painted in on the lips. What's going to happen here is this is going to darken up that value and also it's going to help shift the color or the hue more toward a red orange rather than that brightish red that we had before. And because that glaze of the flesh tone knocked down all those highlights that we erased out before, I'll have to come back in with my eraser to pull them out. If I want some of these highlights a bit sharper and a bit brighter, I can use an electric eraser like I'm doing here. I'll mainly use this on the upper left hand side of the lip, and then I'll go back over to the stick eraser and erase over these again to blend them out. You can see how bright some of these highlights are, that's just fine. I go right back over to the airbrush with the flesh tone and lightly glaze it over the top. This glaze is going to push those values back, knock down some of the contrast, and to me right now, the lips are starting to match the rest of the portrait, so we're heading in the right direction. I'll go back over to the stick eraser and add some more texture into the area, the skin just above the lip, and of course I'm paying attention to the surrounding skin texture, trying to get this area to match in. So like I said, when I'm working on a portrait, I always like to break it down into smaller pieces, this way I don't get overwhelmed and it's not too much. But the difficult part, especially for new painters, is figuring out a way to get all these small parts to come together. And I don't have a great answer for this. It's not like I'm following some formula for my paintings. So the way I think of it is just like what I'm doing right here. I focus on one part of the painting, which is the upper lip in this case, and I paint it the best I can following my reference. Then I compare it to the surrounding area of the painting that I just completed, and see what needs to be fixed. Sometimes you'll notice that the area is too dark or it's too light, so you could just adjust it accordingly. At this point, it looks like that upper lip matches the rest of the painting, so I'm switching back over to the lip color that we mixed in the beginning of this video, and I'm adding in some of the texture on the lower lip, just like I did on the upper lip. So these textures and lines are the shadows for the creases on the lower lip, and what we'll need to do now is start adding in a thin glaze of this paint over the whole lip. This glaze adds an even layer of this paint across that lower lip, which acts as the mid-tone and gives us something to erase into. Also, to get that round shape of the lip, I added some more of this paint toward the top and toward the bottom, 
making the center lighter. So the center just looks like it's sticking out a bit more and the top and bottom looks like they're rolling away. Now I'll switch back over to the flesh tone to add in some of the surrounding skin. The reason I want to get this in is just to get rid of some of that white canvas so I can see the lips clearer. It's always difficult to see your values accurately when there's pure white surrounding them. So now that that color is down, I can see the lips clear and I'll use my ink eraser, start on the left side of this lower lip, and work my way over to the right. The light source is above and to the left of the subject. That means the highlights are always gonna to be to the left of these shadows. So now that this lower lip is in, I'm gonna do just what I said before. I'm gonna look at the surrounding area and see what I need to adjust. Looking at the surrounding area, this lip looks too bright, the value's too high, and it also looks too red. So I'm gonna switch over to the flesh tone color and start using this to spray some more paint to the right side of it and for the shadows, that lower part along the bottom. And you can see here now that I added a small amount of that flesh tone in a few areas on this lower lip. It kind of tamed down that red color, so it looks a little bit more neutral and more natural fitting into the final portrait. So at this point, I would say that these lips are good enough. They fit into the portrait so I can continue painting the rest of it. So that's where I'm gonna finish up this video. The rest of this portrait painting tutorial will be posted in a few more parts up on the members page. I'll have one up mid next week and then we'll just continue it on there. Speaking of members, I want to thank the very kind and generous support of the channel members that you see scrolling up on the screen right now. These people truly help keep this channel going, so I personally cannot thank you all enough. So that's it for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was fun. and I'll be back here next Friday.